Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode four of the Ambassadors View podcast. I'm your host, Ambassador Zimmy, and with us today is our fantastic co-host, Pandy. Hey, guys. So, first off, Phil Spencer teases unannounced games in the xCloud progress. Then, Farming Simulator is getting its own esports league. And finally, our thoughts on the Anthem demo. So let's just go ahead without wasting any time at all and jump in to the very first news story. So a week ago, Phil Spencer and Larry Herb both sat down on a podcast to discuss their plans for 2019's E3. Now, Pandy, there was a lot of information that Phil Spencer gave us in the podcast, so let's just go ahead and jump in and talk about it. One of the most exciting topics that he talked about was that Playground Games and Rare are both working on new unknown projects. Another topic that he brought up in the podcast was the new xCloud technologies and how they were planning on using them. Uh, so let's just go ahead and jump in and talk about it. So what do you think about these unknown games? Well, he said they were building on the success, well, Rare were building on the success of Sea of Thieves. So I wonder, does that mean, are we going to see another game like Sea of Thieves where we're concerned? Or are we looking at maybe an expansion or some some new dlc i'm more interested in playground games though mm -hmm. i was a huge fable fan and i know a lot of people are starting to whisper that perhaps we could be looking at another fable and we you and i have discussed this before and i think we feel the same about a fable game oh i want a fable for so 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 freaking bad and i know this probably isn't going to happen but you know, one thing I was also thinking about uh, whenever reading um, notes from the podcast was what if Playground Games and Rare both came together to work on Fable 4? Be and the reason why I say that is because uh, is because Rare is one of those companies who's really, really into those old timey games. You know, they released Rare Replay, I think was like one of the very first games that they released, uh, at least under Microsoft's banner. And, you know, that game was just filled with just all sorts of just really old classic games. Fable is by its, you know, by its nature, kind of one of those really old um, games because whenever it first released on Xbox, uh, on the Xbox original console, all those many years ago, you know, it really hasn't changed very much. I mean, it's made a few, you know, dramatic tweaks and changes uh, to, you know, to Fable 2 and to Fable 3. But generally, it's the same game. So how amazing would it be if Rare also worked on an upcoming Fable game with Playground Games? Well, I hadn't considered that. Uh, that would certainly be a great way for them to utilize two amazing studios. And let's be honest here, when you look at Sea of Thieves and Fable, is there really that much difference in the animation style? Even the silly little things that they mm -hmm. include in the games, they are, but they are games for adults, but games that children can enjoy as well. Fable is one of those it's games that it's, it's like an MMO, like Skyrim, but you know, it's, it's a bit more kid friendly and Sea of Thieves is quite kid friendly as well they're very very they may not seem it but they are very similar games so it wouldn't they would work well together i think i think that they definitely would which you know currently it's all rumored that playground games is creating the new fable game you know i'm i'm just really excited i hope it's true that's all that's all i have to say is i hope it's true because it's been so long since we've had a good Fable game. And you know, before Lionhead Studios went out of business, they were actually currently working on a Fable game. And you know, we had this news, I think it was back in 2013, 2014, with, uh, with, you know, with them announcing like the Fable Legends and, and all this different stuff. And then eventually they went out of business. And so a lot of us Fable fans have just been waiting forever. I really hope these rumors are true. I really hope Playground Games is working on a new Fable game. Uh, if anybody caught Major Nelson's podcast, Phil Spencer was discussing how he had played it himself whilst on holiday. But there was also mentions in various articles about how some staff had been also playing different games on it. How do you feel about the xCloud? Well, I think the xCloud is some really amazing technology. And I think it's an extremely intelligent way for Microsoft to be entering this next generation. You know, basically saying, if you want to buy our console, buy our console. But if you don't, 
You can also play our games on your, you know, on your iPhones, on your uh, Galaxy Notes, on on your on your tablets or whatever. You know, I, I think it's really really smart because you know a, a, another thing that a lot of people don't really understand is whenever a gaming console first releases, usually I don't know if this is always the case, but usually. The, the 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 company who makes the console is actually losing money by selling that console. You know, if Xbox sold like the Xbox One X, so them selling it for five hundred dollars, that console probably took more than five hundred dollars to actually make. You know, just in hardware and labor and everything like that, right? But they're selling it at an under you know cut cost because they know that they're going to make money back on software. They they know that they're going to make money back on Xbox Live on games and, and, and all sorts of things, right? So by them releasing the xCloud, you know, being able to stream to your smartphone, being able to stream to your tablet, to, to possibly even your smart TV, that's going to cut out the cost of them actually having to make the hardware. But then again, they, they're, they're still going to have to have a cost of, you know, like the servers and making sure that uh, the servers are working. That way, you know, they can stream the game to you. But I think it's an absolutely very very intelligent way of going into the next generation and not to add um that also phil, phil spencer was playing around on the um i guess on his smartphone or on his tablet or wherever you know he was streaming using the x cloud um this holiday season but he also mentioned that the uh x cloud um streaming service kind of thing would be coming to xbox insiders here um, relatively soon, which usually kind of demonstrates that uh, we should see everyone hopefully possibly getting this uh, this new xCloud um, feature hopefully within a year. A year does seem a bit a bit soon in my opinion. Uh, if it's just going, if they're talking about the insiders uh, at some point this year, I think there'll be a lot of bugs that they will have to work out. It's one thing to have a small group of people using the service. It's an entirely different matter to have everybody who has access to Xbox Live, for example, being able to use it. It's a fantastic idea in terms of crossplay, but again, they're not going to be the only ones doing it. Google are doing it, EA are talking about it, as we discussed in an earlier podcast. Amazon are talking about it. Everyone is jumping on to the streaming kind of bandwagon and so Xbox are going to have to really be sure of their product before they roll it out to everyone else. And, and you're right, it might not actually come out this year, you know, it might not because this is a, you know, this is a new updated feature that we've never seen before, you know, and we've never seen Microsoft do before. It's not like adding um, a new panel onto your dashboard with a, with a couple of new features. It's it's a it's it's an incredible, you know, very diverse streaming platform. Um, and so you know you're right. It might not come out uh, this year. And and honestly, I kind of hope it doesn't. You know, because I, I want them to wait on it as long as they can. I think it honestly should probably be a feature that either gets released right before. Um, the new Xbox console and the new PlayStation console comes out, or I think it should get released alongside the new consoles. I think in terms of it, they should leave it with the insiders for as long as possible. Gamers are an inventive bunch. They will test that in ways the people creating it won't even have thought of. And honestly, just hold on to it and release it with the new consoles. Make it a feature of the new console. Mm -hmm. It seems to be the best way forward. Give themselves the most amount of time they can. And it would be a great selling point as well with the new consoles if it works. Yeah, Pandy, I absolutely agree with you. Uh, now let's actually change the subject a little bit and let's talk about what we think Xbox will be announcing at E3 2019. Or more importantly, what we want them to announce during E3. Because as you already know, PlayStation will not be showing up to 2019's E3. They decided to opt out. I don't know if they just don't have anything to talk about or they're just wanting to keep everything under the hood. 
that's but, weird. I mean, Nintendo did the same, but they still have had a stall there yeah. every year. So it's a strange decision. It, it really, it really is, and I don't think it's going to help them in the long run. But maybe it will. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm truly an Xbox fan here, so I really hope Xbox just blows PlayStation <laughs> out of the water. I'm not even. Well, they're lie. going big. We're going but, big this year. <laughs> absolutely. So let's talk about what we want from Xbox this E3. Um, so one thing that I really, really hope that they announce is details on the new console, and I think that they probably will because. Everyone is pretty much sure that 2020, like November, October-ish of 2020, is going to be when Xbox is going to release their new console. And it's also going to be whenever people are thinking PlayStation, the PlayStation 5 will be coming out. So my question is, how soon will Xbox announce and, and show us some details on this new console? And historically... It should be this E3. God, well, I hope so. I mean, I, I would love to see details of the new consoles. I would also, I'm really interested to see if anything happened with uh, the patents they released with the new controllers. Well, the, pa the patent designs for controllers and mm -hmm. whether or not we're going to see a new controller design. On its we, own or with the consoles. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that that would be an excellent way of, of doing that as well. I mean, because, you know, you got to look at it like, like this, right? PlayStation's not showing up, but that doesn't mean that PlayStation fans aren't going to show up. You know what I mean? Or if nothing else, that doesn't mean that PlayStation fans aren't going to tune in, you know, onto Mixer.com or onto Twitch and actually watch the Xbox uh, press release, right? And yeah. so, you know, Xbox is basically sitting there just, I mean, like they're, they, they're put in a fantastic position to just come out and say, this is what we're doing. This is what we're doing. This is what we're doing, you know, and, and just people cheer, you know, because, you know, all of like, it just seems like all of uh, 2018, you know, they've been just really moving all the puzzle pieces around, buying, uh, acquiring a lot of developers for new uh, first party games and, and they've just really been you know busting their butts to try to make the next generation the best that it could be and and I really hope that they use this E3 as a as an option as an avenue to do that because PlayStation's not going to be there you know PlayStation's not going to be able to show them up if anything it's just going to be Xboxes constantly showing them up because they didn't show yeah they Agreed, but what companies do you want to see? They've bought up all these game companies. Do you think there's going to be anything new from any of them? I myself would like to see something from Ninja Theory. I loved Hellblade, Sanuma's I was... Sacrifice. I want to see if they have something in the books. Well, you know, what's really, really interesting about that, Pandy, is Microsoft, of course, has acquired Ninja Theory as a in-house studio. Um, but what's really interesting is that Hellblade Sinew's Sacrifice actually came out on PC and PlayStation um, quite a quite a decent amount of time before it actually came over to Xbox, right? And so usually whenever a game gets released, like they're, you know, they're obviously going to continue working on it. And obviously this is a small indie studio, so who knows what they've actually been able to work on. But I would kind of imagine that they already had an idea of what they wanted to do for their next game beforehand, and they probably started working on it as they were releasing this game out late to the Xbox One. And with Microsoft acquiring them, I would love to see if they have anything new to bring, you know, to bring to the table. You know, like the developers that they added um, to the Xbox family that had just either recently released a game or released a game like the prior year. I would really love to see if any of them have anything to bring to the table, if we if, if we can see anything like that. And another thing that I would really like to see is Obsidian. Like, I would love to see more information on them and on their game. And at the VGAs, Obsidian um, did have a trailer for their new game, The Outer Worlds. And at the end of the trailer, it said that this, that this game would be coming out on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One and on PC. But my question with Xbox now acquiring Obsidian or trying to acquire, I don't know if they if that finally went through or if they're still working out the details, 
but will the Outer Worlds be an Xbox exclusive? You know, or will it be released on PlayStation? And obviously, it's going to be released on PC regardless, either way. But will it be, you know, on PlayStation? Like, I would love to see information about that. Or if not, like, maybe they have another game in the pipeline that they're working on, you know? Well, it, it depends what they want to do with it, I guess. Mm -hmm. I mean, because of Xbox Play Anywhere, they are able to keep it on the PC and keep it as an Xbox um exclusive as we've seen hellblade the new sacrifice is now on games pass so maybe as part of releasing it it has to be an xbox exclusive so it can go to game pass game pass seems to be the direction microsoft are moving with a lot of their catalog that way a lot more gamers can access it it's really it really depends what microsoft actually wants each company to do with their games for all we know, a condition of them acquiring Ninja Theory, for example, was that Hellblade goes on to Game Pass. We don't know what they agree with their indie companies. Mm -hmm. We know that they give them the money to make the games, but we don't know what conditions will have to be met and whether or not these companies will forevermore make Xbox exclusives or if they will have the freedom to uh, release them for PlayStation or Nintendo or whatever. Well, hopefully Xbox just gives them as much freedom as possible because I would hate to see another Bungie situation happen. You know, where Xbox, where, where Microsoft wants them to make another Halo game and then another Halo game. And Bungie just wants to create and just have their creative freedom and do what they want. You know, I would hate for another situation like that to happen. So I hope Microsoft has learned from the errors of their past and are giving these companies a lot of i mean just an absolute crap ton of creative um leeway i agree with you i think indie companies are at their best when they are uh almost free to make whatever they want if they mm -hmm. weren't at their best they wouldn't have attracted the attention of microsoft so uh you've got to be careful i think if they put too much pressure on them too much expectations you might not get another hellblade out of them you might get something that sells, but it might not reach the same standards. Mm -hmm. Indie companies are best when they can do their own thing and they can just put their heart into the games. So, Pandy, do you have anything else to say on this whole, I mean, really big subject with Phil Spencer announcing games and the xCloud and all this different stuff? Do you have anything else to add to this before we change subjects? Nope, just give me another Hellblade and just give me another Fable, please. I want I want a Fable <laughs> 4 so bad. Oh, let me, so let me, bad. Let me actually add this in real quick. So Mike Yabara, he's like the vice president of like gaming or something at Xbox. Like he's 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 one of the higher up people. He he actually tweeted out not too long ago the most anticipated sequel you would love to see uh, on the Xbox One. And I, I just had to reply back and I was like, Fable 4. Oh, by the way, you you could actually make that happen. Wink, wink. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was fantastic. Subtle. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so if it happens, we have you to thank. You do exactly. Everyone, thank me if it happens. Thank you, see me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and move on to our next subject. The developers behind the fantastic game farming simulator giant software has recently announced that they will be running a esports league for their very own game farming simulator um the first season of farming simulator league will consist of 10 tournaments that will take place across europe competitors will go head to head with a chance to win up to 200 and eighty thousand dollars and prize money put up by the developers to be honest with you pandy I, I really don't see whether this could, whether, whether I should cringe at this or laugh at this. I think this is amazingly comical um, because, you know, you have all these games, like these really, really uh, big games that people just get really excited over for, for, um, for, you know, for competitive gaming. You, you know, you have Overwatch, you have uh, League of Legends, you have... Um, God, you have Halo, you have Call of Duty, you have all these games that have a very, very rich history with esports and competitive gaming as a whole. And then you have this game where your main goal is to plow a field, plant your crops, fertilize, harvest, and 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 and, and take your potatoes to like, you know, to to like a restaurant to sell, right? And they're going to turn that into an esports game. They're going to make that a competitive game to see who can harvest the most wheat. I just find it very comical. 
Well, at first, I wasn't sure how to react either. I was like, okay, how could this possibly work? But then I started doing some reading myself. And I actually, I don't know. Okay, for starters, the, the events and the tournaments didn't start off with giant software. They started off as a community thing. The community of farming simulators started doing it themselves. And giants kind of took notice and started doing it themselves. But they started... Uh, having these tournaments at agricultural events and this is the thing if you look at farming simulator you think okay yeah it's just a farming game but it actually bears a lot of similarities with some of the other esports games you find it's it's got a very very well established community of over seven years they themselves have over 10 years in multiplayer games um there's modding and they've got the multiplayer They've got a very rich, vibrant community that wants this. There's even a custom controller for the game. It, oh, you look at it as just a simulator game, but actually it has got potential. And one of the key arguments is you find these exact same tournaments in the real world. You go to an agricultural fair and you might find a tournament or a competition to do with a tractor, anything like that. What they're doing is basically just a reflection of something that already happens in the real world. And in that and in that way, it's actually more realistic than a lot of the esports games you find already. Yeah, but Penny, it's farming. <laughs> like, I know it's farming. It's okay, farming. Here's, here's the question, right? So competitive game. And, and, and I like how you're firmly in the belief that this should be a thing. And I'm I firmly well, in the belief this that is this, this is just this comedy... Is this is um, just comedy. This is just this is just a big a joke. Big, there, there is actually the potential though to be big, to be big money in this. A lot oh of the God. product, a what? lot of the products they use in the actual game are licensed. They are actual products with actual companies in the real world, and the people that they think that will be most attracted to these tournaments aren't just the gamers themselves or the modders, but you might actually find teams from these companies participating because it's great brand awareness as well all of these you know all of these teams that make the various tools or whatever that that gamers can yeah, use the farming they could, yeah thank you they can sponsor individual teams it has the potential for big money and since they started dabbling in esports they saw a 30,000 in uh, a 30,000 person increase in online viewership 30,000 more people sat down and watched what they were doing. I, I understand that they have a very, very dedicated community, right? I, I own Farming Simulator 17 and like 15. I bought them as jokes, right? Because like, you know, I was sitting there in an Xbox Live party and talking with friends and they were like, hey, you know, like, let's find a new game. And I was like, what about Farming Simulator? We could grow corn together. And we all laughed, we bought it, we played it, it you know, and, it, and it's not a bad game. But here's my take on this, right? You could have the most challenging game in the world. And the most challenging game in the world, you know, basically should be probably the number one esports game, right? Because that's going to be the game that most people are going to watch because it's the hardest game to play, right? You can have the hardest game and Farming Simulator uh, Farming Simulator isn't an easy game, I wouldn't say. I mean, it's a simulator. So, you know, it, it, it can be difficult at times. But if it's not fun to watch, you know, if it's not fun to watch, no one's going to care. And so that's my thing. It's like, yeah, they may have a dedicated community, but you know, the idea of esports is to get more people in that otherwise wouldn't be in there. You know what I mean? Call of Duty has, you know, did that back in the past. You know, um, they brought tons of people in just because of the competitive nature of Call of Duty that that otherwise would have never would have never transitioned or played Call of Duty possibly. You know, and, and so like the main the main thing I'm kind of just saying saying here is I just don't know if they're going to have the backing. And I know that you said that thirty thousand people joined, but you know, how many of those people were just there for for jokes? You know, I don't know, but you know, you talk about them having the backing. They've already got sponsors in Intel mm -hmm. and Logitech. Um, you talk about uh, how people might not be interested, but. You know, these these actual tournaments were originally fan created. This is an yeah. example of a company also looking at what their community wants. 
if their community is forming these tournaments and that's what they want, then why not create something official, which they have? They've got FarmCon 2020, which is where all the winners of these tournaments are, well, but, but you, the almost points la- booker. you almost laughed whenever you said FarmCon. I, I honestly, I could, because I am not expecting to say words like FarmCon together I know, when it comes to a saying. game. That's what and I'm it, saying. <laughs> and it's unusual and it's not my thing. But then I'm going to level with you. I don't play League of Legends. That's not really my thing either. You know, I play thing. Overwatch with my friends. It's not my thing. I don't play Rainbow Six Siege. I don't play a lot of the esports games anyway. So as long as people are having fun, I I don't I don't care if they're killing each other or farming corn. As long you know, as they're I, happy. <laughs> I agree. I agree. You know, I'm not I'm not trying to 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 discourage any person who likes farming. <laughs> to going to one of these fantastically done farming simulator tournaments, or if you're a big fan of FarmCon, I'm not discouraging you. If if that's what you like, if that's what you're into, then do it. And if they have a huge community who all wants this, who am I to say that it's dumb or that you know whatever, right? I mean, I'll still laugh at it, but you know, I'm do not. You know what farming? Do you know what farming simulator reminds me of? See me. What's that? Did you did you ever watch The Simpsons? I, I did, yeah. There's that episode where Marge is trying to encourage the kids to go out and do some yard work uh-huh. and they don't and then later on they go to an arcade and there's a yard work simulator and they start bugging her for money to play it and she just looks at them and she's like but when I try to get you to do yard work at home that's what it reminds me of that's what I just picture in my head <laughs> is people not wanting to do farming yeah but, but going and playing farming simulator and I don't mean to disrespect anybody but when I, I first simulators. heard the game some that's, of the best games I've ever played ha- have been simulators, but I think that, you know, I just don't think this game is quite ready for 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 a big community in competitive gaming. I just don't think. But you know what? If if people enjoy it, if if they if they got thirty thousand people to watch, hopefully they can keep those numbers. Hopefully that increase can help them out. They can keep those numbers. And hopefully, and who knows, farming over in Europe might be a huge thing. I mean, I don't know. I don't live there. But I hope that that, that, that they just thoroughly enjoy it. I, I hope that they they have many tournaments to come. I, I don't, I just don't know. I, it's just, it's so weird. <laughs> and it's like, you mentioned, you know, you don't play League of Legends. I don't play League of Legends either. I actually tried a game like it that Blizzard released, and I hated the game. You know, I can't play a game like League of Legends or something. Um... But with that being said, I, I'm not going to say it's a bad game, you know, but I can kind of understand competitive, like the competitive nature of um, of like League of Legends or Rainbow Six or Call of Duty or Halo or Overwatch or any of those other games. I can com- I can understand the competitive nature because the whole competitive side of it is to try to kill each other, right? This For Farming thing, Simulator, though. like I never looked at farming as like a competitive thing. I mean, obviously it's a business, but... Whenever I play Farming Simulator, I don't look at it as a competitive thing. Like, you know, me and my friends aren't just like, you know, you go to that field, I'll go to this one, and we'll just both, you know, see who can make the most corn. I don't look at it like that. <laughs> I don't know. I The people behind it, Giants, are saying they see people turn up. The teams are prepared. They have full playbooks. They know where they're going to drive their tractor to first. Oh they my know what God. they're going to do. <laughs> <And> <laughs> I... And yes, while it seems silly, they are every bit as dedicated. (laughs) They know where they're going to drive the tractor to first. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) I can't. Well, we might have, I might just not say that bit. Why don't you finish it up and change the subject? Okay. Oh, we laugh. I'm just going to go ahead and end the subject because it's not going anywhere good. Let's just go ahead and go to our very last subject. So the VIP for Anthem demo has ended last week, and it's leaving some of us worried about the future of the game as a whole. So I just want to really kind of bounce around a couple of different topics and just kind of see uh, how we're currently standing with the game, Pandy. Like, what are your thoughts about Anthem um, as a whole? Like, have, Did you actually play the demo, or did you just watch people play it? I... 
I tried to play the demo. I was very kindly given one of the VIP friend codes by mm -hmm. a friend of mine. Um, I spent hours stuck on a loading screen and it was a very beautiful, beautiful loading screen. Mm -hmm. But uh, I myself didn't really get the chance to play it. I read though that they booked over nine hours of playtime over the two and a half days. And I'm wondering how much of that nine million hours um, was actual people playing or people stuck in loading screens. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it just had so many issues. Um, but then what game doesn't? When PUBG was launched, people were wasting 30 minutes for an available game. There was okay. rubber banding. But, but well, okay, so, so there's a very valid argument there, right? Whenever PUBG released, it didn't release as a full-fledged title. It released as a early access game, right? You paid $30, you got early access to play it, and you knew that the game wasn't a finished product. Anthem, about a full-fledged $60 game that's going to be releasing. But the problems I'm discussing with PUBG were the problems they had on their launch day, not when it was released uh prior as the beta or early access but that was it on mm -hmm. each day itself PUBG itself as you know still isn't completely fixed um oh, it yeah, still no, has problems uh and so i think it will be the same for anthem i think this demo they may have fit the next demo that's coming up this weekend they may have fixed some of the problems but there will still be <laughs> problems i think and even up until launch day i think there will be problems well, another thing to also take into consideration, though, too, Pandy, is that um, when PUBG, you know, and I understand, like, you, you could, you know, you could make the argument that, that other big AAA companies have these same problems. But when when PUBG first released, um, you know, that was that was Blue Hole's very first game that they've ever released. You know what I mean? Anthem is Bioware's, you know, who knows? like number of games that they've released before this you know like th like they are a very well established company so is ea you know and you know i understand that other you know game companies have these same issues you know bethesda is a great example you know they, they they seem to always have issues with their games whenever they first came out but the the real question i have here is you know ea has released so many games being, you know, one of the biggest gaming, uh, you know, publishers in the world, right? But they always seem to have the same server issues when their games come out. You know, why is that? You know, I mean, I, I understand. I, I, I'm not a game developer. I don't, you know, I couldn't tell you how these servers actually work. You know, I'm sure it's a very complicated, complex, you know, um, job to get you know all these servers online and get them working get them i guess calibrated the way that they need to be but why does it always seem like ea is the one that has these issues you know with uh with you know i mean back in the day um battlefield like battlefield 2 ba pretty much all the battlefields <laughs> you know battlefield 3 was i think like one of like the biggest examples of this but they always seem to be having these issues and I will say that I, you know, I logged in to Anthem on the first day. It wouldn't let me join. Um, you know, it, it, you know, it, um, it was just the constant loading screen, like what you were saying. Um, and then I logged on onto the second day, walked, uh, walked throughout the uh, Fort Tarsus, I think is what it's called. Um, talked to a few people and stuff like that. And then I hopped into my, um, into my exo suit, into my uh, Javelin or, uh, is that what it's called the javelin the javelin whatever um and and i started loading in to go to a game and i was sitting at a loading screen for about 10 to 15 minutes and i just finally said forget this and i turned it off and i just went and watched people live streaming it i myself am not sold i really am not and i think that when it comes to ea always having these problems you can argue that you don't know what's going to happen when you release a game like that to the public gamers uh will do things to a game that you might not even have considered but to not be even be able to get into the game is a, is a pretty huge mistake i just maybe they're just not testing it with enough people well you know what i think it is i think it is they're trying to launch it earlier than what it needs to be launched you know 
we've we've seen it be done with so many EA titles before. It was done with Mass Effect. Uh, it was done with uh, Battle uh, Battlefront One, Battlefront Two. You know, uh, it, it was also done with the the newest uh, Battlefield Five game. I think EA is just trying to please their shareholders so much. You know, even more now because you know, I mean, they, they, their stocks are like fifty percent down. I think that they're trying to please them. I think that they're trying to rake in a ton of money, and because of that, they're releasing these games way before they need to be released. And I think that that's a big contributing factor to Anthem. Um, but with that being said, let me tell you, the game does look beautiful. The graphics are, you know, I mean, they're very nice. I mean, they're, you know, they're top of the line today, what you would expect. The voice acting is absolutely fantastic. Fantastic voice acting. I really, really enjoyed that. Um, as far as the gameplay, I really couldn't tell you because I never actually got to play it. Uh, but from what I actually watched, it looked like it was fun, but it honestly also kind of looked like it was boring you know it looked like just another looter shooter it looked yeah. like uh it looked like like ea's version of destiny and so for a lot of players i could see you know i could see quite a few players like jumping into the world really getting into it really getting into the lore just absolutely loving going around shooting people and just the grind of it right but i think you're a lot of your average just 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 general regular consumers might buy it they might play it for 30 hours and then they're going to go back to call of duty or something you know um because i just think it kind of looks it just kind of looks grindy you know it kind of looks like go to this area kill a bunch of enemies take your loot go back to fort tarsus that, that's well, maybe, generally what it looks like well maybe that's what they're trying to do maybe they're trying to create their own version of destiny who mm -hmm. knows in the future we may see expansions and loot boxes and all the the little EA things crop up, they might see this as their chance to make a destiny and a new franchise. Well, another thing though, too, is, uh, is their microtransactions. And I, you know, with me not actually getting to play the game, I couldn't really see or experience it as the way that somebody th that has actually, you know, played it could. But I was watching another YouTuber whose name is Boogie2988. And he was talking about the microtransactions, and there's there's currently a huge question mark with that. You know, um, it looks like they're going to be adding a store, but what are they going to be adding? You know, to the microtransaction store, are are they eventually going to add a PvP game mode and make it you know uh, pay to win? Is it just going to be pay to win where you know you can buy the best armor, you can buy better guns just off of the microtransactions, and EA just does not have a very good track record with putting microtransactions into their games. And so that's another really big, huge question mark on whether or not your average consumer should even buy this game. I am not sold. Like, may, if I had had more chance to actually play the demo, I managed to get past the loading screen. And then, and then that was it. I walked around for a little bit. I didn't really manage to do anything I got into the suit I went to click a mission and then I was stuck in a loading screen again mm -hmm. and I like Destiny but like many games it's a game I pick up and play with friends I, I, I don't really play it alone and I don't see Anthem being something for me uh, EA has honestly it doesn't have a great track record for me anyway they don't really seem to release many games that uh, kind of grab my attention or cater to my taste. So I think Anthem, whilst it looks stunning, and I, if it came to Game Pass, then yeah, maybe I'd play it. But I don't see myself going out and buying this. Uh, I rarely buy big games anyway, as, as you know. And I don't think this is going to be one of the games I pick up this year. Yeah. I mean, honestly, for me, it's one of those titles that I'm just not going to take a risk on. If if I get a code for it, I'll play it. I'll do a review for it. But I am not going to go out and spend, you know, my hard earned money on this title. Um, you know, and, and if I was, I would probably wait. And, you know, and I, w I would either wait for the reviews. And if everyone was saying it was the most amazing game ever, then I might buy it. 
but generally speaking with a lot of ea's games i just wait until they go on sale like uh battlefield 5 like i really want to play that game but i'm gonna wait until it's like 20 dollars you know what i mean and then i'm gonna play it beat the campaign maybe maybe dive in a little bit to the multiplayer but honestly i just really kind of want to play it just for its single player um but yeah, I, I don't really expect that I'm going to really play this game, at least not from what I've seen currently. Uh, but if any of our viewers do want to try out Anthem, um, on the day that this podcast released, hope, uh, releases, hopefully, which is going to be on uh, Friday, uh, the 1st of uh, February, it could possibly be on Saturday, the 2nd of uh, February, the uh, open anthem demo should be live and so you guys can actually go onto the xbox store download the demo and play it you know just for free it should be an open uh demo for everyone to be able to play and hopefully you guys can make a decision on whether or not you want to buy this game uh but anyway so pandy is there anything else that you want to talk about with anthem before we just go ahead and wrap up this podcast no i think we covered it all to be honest Alrighty. Anyway, guys, that's all that we have for this episode of the Ambassadors View podcast. Make sure to check back every Friday for a brand new episode packed full with gaming news. I hope you all have a fantastic day. Peace out, guys. See you, guys.